Hey everyone, welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. Well, I love reading studies and sometimes the studies have information in it that, well, are going to be pretty clear to people, most people who are just reading the study for its titled message. So this one's going to be an interesting one. And before we get started, let me do the disclaimer. Um, this video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Okay, this study is pretty interesting. It was a 2020 study, so it, not a brand new study. It's been out for a little while, but it's one that I came across and was reading through it again just for fun and found some pretty interesting information because once you understand what the things they're talking about sometimes in the study, you can say, oh my God, that's what that means. <laughs> and this is one of those cases because this was a study on diabetes and it was looking at, you know, exercise and how effective it is uh, in helping with those with diabetes. Okay, that's a cool thing. Definitely exercise is known to uh, help um, not only prevent, but even start to begin to reverse uh, diabetes. That's been well established in the uh, sphere. What they teased out, though, is something very interesting. And let me dive into it. Let me uh, talk about the title of the study here. I'll go ahead and put the study and the link up on the screen for you so you can see it. I'll copy and paste it in the comment section. Those of you waiting uh, later, just check it out on Facebook, Facebook Live, and you can see that. I'll pull it up on the screen so that you can read it if you're watching it on YouTube. So this study was uh, published in January of 2020 in Cell Metabolism. The study is called Gut Microbiome Fermentation Determines the Efficacy of S Exercise for Diabetes Prevention. So this is this is a mouthful of a study, but it really kind of spells out exactly what we're talking about here. Um, so gut fermentation. Gut fermentation is what our microbiome does. Our microbiome breaks down or ferments the food that we eat and makes the different parts of the food we eat bioavailable. One of the unique attributes of our gut fermentation of the microbiome is that it breaks down fiber into a substrate called short chain fatty acids. Short chain fatty acids are uh, several different things like propionates, but one of the more important ones is butyrate. Okay, so we know there are certain bacteria that thrive and feed on fiber, hence the term prebiotic fiber. Prebiotic meaning it feeds the microbiome. Let me get this off the screen there. All right, so clear that consuming fiber feeds these specific bacteria, which consume the fiber, break it down to short-chain fatty acids, including butyrate, which can actually assist in reducing the inflammation post-workout. Okay, so we know this is a good thing too, because that'll lead to quicker recovery times, more gains in strength, but here's an interesting thing that they tease out. Now I'm going to put this up on the screen because it's that important. I'll put this quote directly from the study up on the screen. And it says exercise is the most cost effective lifestyle intervention for the prevention and treatment of diabetes. Direct quote from the study. However, its clinical implementation is hindered by the phenomenon of exercise resistance. Now, this is where it gets interesting because that's where I keyed on. I'm like, exercise resistance? Wait a minute. You exercise, you get results, right? Not so fast. They found that some people they categorized as responders, people responding to the exercise. That means the exercise actually reduced 
their body fat, help reduce their blood glucose, help reduce their uh, fasting insulin levels. These are all important for those with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. So exercise improves these factors, including A1C and, and lots of host of other factors, uh, C-reactive proteins, a whole host of things positively. Right. So we, we knew this already, but why were some people not responding? That's where they dove into the question. And this is where it gets interesting. And I will put the next quote right up on the screen. This part is what I talk about on a weekly basis and a nutshell. The microbiome of responders exhibits enhanced capacity for the generation of short chain fatty acids. Okay, so how are the short chain fatty acids being generated? By people consuming whole plants and sources of fiber. So the fiber goes into the gut, the microbiome then breaks down the, the uh, fiber into short chain fatty acids. So the microbiome of responders, those responding well to exercise, were those that had the highest short chain fatty acids, which means they were consuming more fiber, which means they were consuming more plants. That means those responding better to exercise were those eating more plants. So you kind of have to read through this. You have to understand what you know short chain fatty acids are, where they come from, how the, how the microbiome works, to get that. So what they're saying here in a nutshell is basically the more plants you're eating, the better your body responds to exercise. What? More plants equals more strength, more muscle? That's what they're saying right here. So they got better results. And I'm going to show you those results in just a second. But Whereas the other group of non-responders, and I'll quote directly from the study, whereas the microbiome of non-responders is associated with an increased production of metabolically detrimental compounds. When you eat animal products, it raises bile. Bile helps to digest and break down the proteins and the saturated fats that are in animal products. So when you create a bile environment, you can create bad or pathogenic bacteria thrive in bile. Good bacteria generally do not. So good bacteria feed on fiber and create short chain fatty acids and produce better outcomes for exercise. Those eating animal products actually create a bile environment, which creates uh, an, an avenue for pathogenic bacteria to thrive. They create negative me uh, metabolic metabolites, which reduces the effect of exercise. So those in this study, and this was a small study, so it requires definitely more research, had 39 men in it with prediabetes. The exercise did induce alterations in the gut microbiota, microbiota and, and, and that correlated with improvements in glucose homeostasis and insulin sensitivity. So when they exercised, at least their gut was trying to change to a more butyrate producing or short chain fatty acid producing atmosphere, but those bacteria will only be able to thrive if you're feeding them a large source, a good source of the substrate that makes short chain fatty acids, which is fiber. And it only comes from plants. So it's basically saying that those that ate more plants had more fiber, created more short chain fatty acids, and upregulated their response to the exercise. This called made them responders. That's right. Those eating more plants responded better to the exercise and produced better results. 
Now, I've been saying this all along, but it's so great when you find it in a study showing real results. So let's take a look at some of these results. The first graph I'm going to show you, let me see if I pull it up here, is the responders versus non-responders. Remember, responders are producing short-chain fatty acids. So you can see the responders in blue at the top there. Higher short-chain fatty acids, obviously short-chain fatty acids coming from the degradation or the uh, metabolization by the microbiome of consuming fiber. Increased GABA, which is great, great for the brain, great for a relaxing muscle, post right? and utilization of branch chains. So using them up and, 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 and uh, pulling them out of the system. So obviously they don't have detrimental effects. Glycemic control went up in the responders, those eating more plants, more fiber, getting more sh short chain fatty acids. Insulin sensitivity increased, glycemic control increased. Now, you can see at the bottom in the red, those with the unhealthier microbiome had less GABA, had less short chain fatty acids because they're not getting that fiber source and detrimental metabolites went up. Now, as you can see over all the way on the right hand side is the body fat went up and the muscle went down. We're going to show you that next. So uh, I know this is really small. Sorry, I, I didn't have time to, to crop this to give you a better size. But um, right actually here, you can see lean mass. I know that's really hard to see, but the blue is lean mass. So roughly about two and a half pounds more lean mass was generated while in the middle on this same line here, if the middle ones showed less body fat, about two and a half pounds less body fat. So less body fat, more muscle mass, simply because you had created a more favorable microbiome by consuming more whole food plants that produce more fiber, that allow the bacteria to produce more short chain fatty acids, including butyrate. So this is how it works. And this is the study showing it. This is pretty amazing. Now they showed responders, those eating higher amounts of plants, higher amounts of fiber, had a remarkable 42.7% decrease in fasting insulin. Now this is awesome, especially for those at risk, those who are overweight, trying to get back into the gym, starting out probably pre-diabetic or diabetic, you want to get that uh, uh, fasted insulin down. And this helps with, this shows it's remarkable at that. 42.7% decrease in fasting insulin. That's phenomenal. So all of these factors are showing what's doing it. But I'm gonna actually put up uh, a couple of other studies that kind of feed off this for your further reading if you are so inclined. I'm a, a research. <laughs> Geek. So here we go. Here's two more studies. The first study uh, is high fat diet aggravates age related decline in skeletal muscle. So the high fat diet, if you are doing a high fat diet like keto or uh, low carb diet that's high in fat or Atkins or, you know, one of those low carb ish type diets that are high in fat, you're aggravating age-related muscle decline. So you're going to lose muscle faster than those on a low-fat plant-based diet. The second one is the microbiome, plant versus animal, and it's called the effects of a vegetarian and vegan diets on gut microbiota. So the two things that we're really looking for is uh, diversity, which means lots of different kinds of bacteria in there. And this happens much more efficiently and effectively on a plant-based diet, especially if you're eating a varied diet of beans and grains and greens and fruits and vegetables, whole foods and vegetables with lots of fiber, prebiotic fiber, like starches and um, uh, resistant starches and inulin and different things like this from onions and beans and legumes and all these wonderful things. Um, I'm going to go ahead and post up some more studies on showing the differences between um, the protein intake, showing no differences in, in muscle gains or even positive uh, one on pea protein that actually showed it increased muscle gains about 30% more 
than eating uh, consuming animal proteins as your source. I've explained that in another video. Check out my videos, animal protein versus plant protein for muscle building. I go a deep dive into why that's the case. Higher essential amino acids, lower in the leucine, which you don't need because it's way too high. We're not a 600 pound animal. We're not a thousand pound animal. I hope so. I hope you're not because you are, you're pushing death closer and closer to your, the end of your life if you are. Um, so we definitely don't need that much leucine. We do need a little bit of leucine uh, if you are a uh, bodybuilder or exercising regular to help you get that uh, stimulation of muscle growth through the mTOR pathway. That's a good thing. You don't want to overstimulate it, especially if you're sedentary. And that's basically what people are doing on a standard meat-based diet. They're way over consuming protein, especially uh, way over consuming leucine, which is not necessary, and being on a sedentary lifestyle. Exercise, proper amounts of branched chain amino acids, a good whole food plant-based diet, and you're off to the races, getting the best possible results. The great thing is that you now know through this research, and yes, it's a small study, and it's done on diabetics, pre-diabetics. It is done in men though. So that's gonna be a little bit more responsive. Two and a half pounds more muscle, two and a half pounds less body fat. Uh, that's pretty significant within the groups and showing that uh, the higher amounts of plant intakes or fiber intake, this can give you a better result in the gym. Eat plants, work out, that's the way to keep strong and healthy, and you can get faster and better results, and that's what the research is telling us. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for tuning in. You can watch us here Thursday, every Thursday at 4 p.m., and I will be bringing the latest research to you always uh, as it comes out. Even though this one is a couple years old, it is one that I had to pull out some data from in order to get it into relevancy to show you that eating plants plus exercise will get you the best results quicker and more magnified results than eating the standard American diet. Hope you did like this, give it a share. Let's get this information out to more people. It's a bit sciencey, but it's good information to let you know plants can give you better results in the gym. Thanks for listening. Tune in every Thursday, or you can watch the replays on LinkedIn, uh, on YouTube, at Clean Machine Online. See you next week.